Hello, hello, hello out there. Hello out there. Hey, Yolanda Haywood, how are you? Hello out there. Hey, I see some eyes out there. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. City and state, please. Let me know where you're from. Say hello out there. Today, is ha it has truly been a truly grateful day. Hmm. Let me know where you're signing in from. Hey, Sister Portia, how are you? We'll get started momentarily. Ladies, I, I tell you what, it, 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 we have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to be grateful for out there today. And I was going to go live strictly from my Rediscover Her platform. But I think that everyone needs to hear this message today. And for those of you who are not over in my Rediscover Her platform uh, uh, community, um, I can tell you what, you're really missing out. You're really missing out. But today it's bigger than just the community. It's bigger than just the community today. And I just wanted to come on and share with you for a few moments. I know it's Saturday. Most people are out doing some incredible things and that's okay. Um, but I wanted to bring this to whomever, to whomever jumped on this evening. You know, make sure you share this. Make sure you share it with your friends. Make sure you share and you have them come on. Um, I tell you, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. So I, I tell you what, ladies, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started over here in just um, maybe 15 seconds. I, I, I just wanted... I just wanted some more of that song to play. Mm. Yes, um, I am grateful. I am grateful. I am so grateful. Mm. If you're grateful for something, if you're grateful for something, just shoot across some um, some hearts and some love. Share with me on this screen what you're grateful of and what you're grateful for uh, on this Saturday at 7.16 in the afternoon, um, in the evening time. I tell you what, if you're truly, truly grateful out there, let me know what you're grateful for. Let me know what you're grateful for because I tell you what, today he really just put it back in my face to show me how grateful how grateful I am and how thankful I am. So I, I'm just going to, I'm going to, um, let me just mute this. Let me just mute this. Ladies and gentlemen, who's out there? Ladies and gen gentlemen, who's truly out there today? I tell you what, I just arrived back home. Um, I was away on last evening with my family. Uh, we were in Charleston, South Carolina on last evening. We had to do some, um, Yes, second chances. That's right, Yolanda Haywood. I'm so thankful and grateful, not only for second, but third, fourth, and fifth chances. Oh, man. Oh, I tell you. Today, you know, my, my kids had something to do. My kids said, hey, Tammy, how are you? How are you? My, my kids had something to do in Charleston um, uh, today. And as we continue to move forward with all of our plans for the future. And, um, and today I went by. I, I stopped by. Yes, life, health, family, most of all, the love of our father. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, I, I you know... A lot of my life I don't share on the platform. I share all the, you know, the wonderful and happy things. And, and, and But the best part of my life I keep to myself because you have to keep something to yourself. But today was a teachable moment. Today was a moment that my children just simply said, wow. I'm just so thankful, Mama. And I'm so grateful. Because while we were there in Charleston... I went by to see my cousin, and I'll keep her name uh, 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 to myself, but I went by to see my cousin. She's there in Charleston, South Carolina. She's there, and I see the connection. You know the devil is a lie. 
The devil is a lie. I see the connection. Now the connection was just fine inside of my office. And now it's going to your connection is weak. But you know what? We're going to get this message. There we go. All right. We're going to get this message out today. But this morning, not even knowing this morning, I posted um, about having an attitude of gratitude this morning inside of, of, of my Rediscover Her community. You know, and for those of you who are not a part of the Rediscover Her community, go over on Facebook. Become a part of that because that is where I'm going to bring these intimate messages. But today I wanted everyone to hear that. And you can become a part of that group by simply going to... Um, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rediscover her um but needless to say i i was and so this morning i posted that and i asked people to post what are some of the things that they are so grateful for to today and so as the day went by, you know, I started to meditate on him and I started to meditate on God and I started to meditate on everything and where he has brought me from and, and what he has done in my life and, 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 and all of the above. And then before we left Charleston, South Carolina, I went to visit my cousin and I went to visit my cousin because she's my first cousin, but my first cousin is there. She has been there at MUSC for the last week and almost week and a half with her 14 year old son and so I said that I would just go by and give her a smile because see I understand where she I understand where she is as a caretaker and we walk back into MUSC I haven't been to MUSC in 10 years since God healed my husband of cancer and so the four of us is walking down the hall because the last time I was there, I was rolling him out, putting him back into the car after God had healed him from stage three, uh, three, a colorectal cancer. But I knew that I needed to go see my cousin because for, for, for us, family got us through everything when we went through that. And I'm walking down the hallway going to the MUSC Children's Center of Oncology because in December her son simply said to her my knees are hurting and as a 14 year old you know because Mason tells me that all the time at 11 mama my legs hurting my knees hurting and I give him the same response that she gave her 14 year old son you're growing they're growing pains you're growing so that's the response that I gave Mason all the time. That's what I give him all the time. But for her son, he continued to complain. Mama, my knees hurt. So she took him to the pediatrician. Long story short, the pediatrician didn't see anything. They took x-rays, didn't see anything. But the, the, but the fellow continued to complain about his knees hurting and wanted pain medicine because his knees was hurting. And I tell you what, she took him back to the doctor. And she took him to the pediatrician and said, listen, I think we need to see someone else. And he referred them out. To make a long story short, after referring him out, they saw something on the x-rays that they did not like. And they immediately sent him up to MUSC for more testing. Well, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, we got the message and the news that he indeed had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is uh, cancer of the bone marrow. So we were, you know, we're good. I'm like, okay, fine, no problem. We get that. We, we get that. It's a part of this process, and, and we're going to get through this. You know, how do you look at your cousin and tell her, her 14-year-old, that, you know, it's going to be all right? Because children shouldn't have to go through this. But I also know that it is a part of this process, and our father knew that this was going to transpire before, she, before he ever gave her son to her. So... With that being said, last week, last week, we, we, after being staged, we found out that he had stage 4C non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and that it was in his spine and that it was in another part of his body and that it was in his right leg. And so we went there today to see her and, and everything that I was complaining about totally disappeared because when I walked in that in MUSC 
pediatric oncology ward. That was the cutest little fella. He couldn't have been no more than hmm, two and a half, maybe three. He was talking, so I'll say three. He was maybe three years of age. And his mommy, he had no hair. He had his mask on his face. And his mommy was pushing him. And he simply said in the cutest little voice, Hi! My heart broke. My heart broke. And she continued to push him. And when it was time for him to go back into his room in the, in the pediatric oncology ICU ward, he started to cry. He didn't want to go back in that room. And then I looked at my children who was who's healthy. And I looked at my babies and I simply said, God, I thank you. Because they could have been them or any of our children. And I looked at Michael and I saw his face. And I looked at him and I saw how grateful he was that 10 years ago, that when the doctors told us one thing, God told us something totally different. And that when he simply said that I would be alive to walk my daughter down the aisle whenever I give her away to a man, that he meant that. That we pulled on the words that God has simply given us that he should live and not die and that by his stripes he, was, he would be healed. But I started to think about people. And I started to think about how ungrateful we are. And I simply said, from this point forward, even after I looked at my little cousin, who had just came back, they, when we got there, they had just brought him back from receiving chemotherapy in his spine. Because they don't want it to get outside of his spine. And then... The nurse came in. She came back in. We wasn't there five minutes. And she said, we're getting ready to give him his other round. We're getting ready to give him his other round of chemotherapy. Now, this is a 14-year-old. And I want you to keep this in mind for all of you who are complaining about nothing. Who's complaining about your hair may not be right. You don't like the way your pants fit. He didn't treat you right. She didn't do right by you. I want you to listen very carefully. Because see, this 14 year old rolled back in. After having chemotherapy infused in his spine. He was getting ready to have it for four hours in his port. And he got in the bed. He didn't want to speak and say anything to anyone. And he put the pillows over his head. Because the fellow was in pain. He didn't feel good. And, you know, and here we were visiting with a smile on our face. And then the nurse said, we're going to bring him back. We're going to bring him back after we sign in his chemotherapy. We're going to bring it back and we're going to get it started. But we have to sit here for four hours while he fused. And my cousin said to me, she said, Shanette, I said, yes, because I, you know, I wanted him to hear me speak. And I wanted him to know that we were in this room because we understood where he was coming from, that my husband was 10 years cancer free and that he would be forever cancer free. And that the same God that healed Michael was the same one that was going to heal his body 100 percent totally. And so the nurse came in and said, that this one, because this particular chemo is so powerful, they call it the red devil. Okay, can you hear me? When, when, when she said that out of their mouth, she said they call it the red devil. And I immediately, I immediately started binding the words that she was saying out of her mouth that I bound that and I sent it back to the pits of hell from which it came that you were not going to infuse something in his body that was called the red devil but that the God that we served was going to make sure that he would not be affected by it 
that he would not suffer from it, that it will heal his body from any cancer that was ever flowing through. And that we bound and we rebuke the name of red. How do you name a chemotherapy medicine red devil? So I told my cousin, I say, oh no, we got to pray right now. We going we to pray right now. Because I refuse to allow the doctors to speak whatever they're going to speak. They have to do what they're going to do and say. But you don't ever have to accept it. And so I told her, you will not accept the fact that that's what they call that. But that you would stand in the gap for your son who was too weak to pray for himself. And that you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the same God that healed my friend um, Trail at church when they gave her six months to live was the same one that was in here because we came in here. We came in here and we brought him with us. And that whatever they said was a bold-faced lie. And that you, that you were going to stand for your son and stand in the gap knowing what his word said. And yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. Because he is always with you. And so you all that are out there, being so ungrateful for all the, the little things, the, 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 the not so big things. I don't have enough money. I don't have anyone to spend time with. I'm too fat. My hair isn't long enough. I don't have the job that I want. You're just complaining and complaining. You're angry when you get up in the morning. You don't want to smile at anybody that comes across you and in your face. Today is so bad. People, you know, you don't even want to speak to anybody. You don't want to smile at anybody. You don't want to do any of those things but be the lumpy, grumpy grump that you are. Switch places with him. I can promise you he would rather switch places with you than to be there. Guys, we got to stop it. We must stop it. And we must be grateful for waking up and allowing our eyes to see the light outside. Because not everybody is waking up. We got to be grateful that God allowed us to have healthy children. That we are healthy. That we have our life, our health, and our strength that we can breathe and we have an opportunity to change whatever it is. That, that, that no matter how bad it look from our eyes, someone else have it even worse. And I can promise you that if they could change places with you, they would. So you got to know, you got to know what you know what you know. That you have to be grateful for the little things and he will add anything onto you. See, when you're grateful for the small things, he will bring all of those things to you. You know, as I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm just saying, Lord, I think I wanted to take off running down the hall and just start screaming because I understood when Satan came and the death angels came in our house and we refused to let them in. So I'm asking every one of you that's out there watching this today. It's not about Martha Cooper Hudson and what I do for my life, my, for my life and my, um, uh, it's not about that today. It's about you taking a moment to say a prayer for a 14 year old who cannot pray for himself right now. It's about every prayer warrior that's on this live that hears the sound of my voice, that you pray for him, that you pray for divine healing in his body. But as you are praying that you are thanking God for you, for you, you are thanking him for allowing him to see, allowing you to see another day for allowing you to be a blessing to someone else. Make sure that you are thankful, are thankful. Hey, Tess. Hey, Tess. Yeah, I see my girlfriend Tess is out there. I call her Maisha. She's Tess. But she has a lot to be thankful for. And Maisha, I thank God for you. Because I'm telling you, when her little lion, that's what we call him, he's a little lion. That little rascal is a mess. But when that brilliant, young, brilliant, young man, young boy was born, and I remember it like it was yesterday, 
Because I was sitting on the sofa praying with her when the doctors was telling her that all of this stuff was going to be wrong with her child. Because she gave birth to him at what, 24 weeks? 26 weeks in her wedding ring. I'll never forget the pictures that she sent me. Her wedding ring could fit around his ankle. And they would say that they said that he was going to have all of these issues. And I told her, you're going to believe the doctor or you're going to believe what God said about your child. And that you speak life over him no matter what. And I can tell you, he's one of the most little brilliant six or seven year olds that's walking on this planet. 23 weeks and four days, 50% chance of living. And he's a genius. He's a genius. See, you don't have to accept what is being spoken over your life. You don't have to accept when people speak negative things over your life. You can stop them midair and you can let them know that the person that they're speaking about is not the person that's standing in front of them. You don't have to accept the lies that they say about you. God, you have an opportunity to do what you need to do for yourself. When the doctors come and say one thing, you start speaking the word over your life. Now, I'm not telling you don't take your treatments. I'm not telling you don't take your medicine. Don't be no fool. Because God put doctors in places so that he can help you. But as you take in whatever it is that you're taking, because you may have an illness in your body, you simply say, by your stripes, Lord, I am healed. And I thank you. I'm so thankful and grateful of the healing that has transpired in my body right now, even if it had not done so yet. Because you speak of those things as if they were before it ever happens. So I'm thanking and I'm thankful for all that he has done for me. I'm thankful that my kids never had one time that they ever come home and flick the lights on and they didn't come on. I'm thankful that they never came home and didn't have food. Even when times got as hard as they did for us and people had no clue. Because see, I knew that this was just a season that we were going through, but God was going to take me through so that I'm able to share these stories with awesome and phenomenal men and women around this world. See, I am thankful. People look at me and you don't know my story unless you read the entire book from cover to cover and he's not finished writing it yet. So you can't, you can't judge a person by the chapter in which you came into their life. You got to know why my passion is so deep. You got to know why I run like hell to make sure that I fulfill my dreams on this planet. That I walk in my purpose irregardless of what else is going on around me. You must know the story in order before you judge me or anyone else. Because I'm telling you, there's never a day, there's never a day that I will not open my mouth to speak life into someone. Because I know that that is my purpose on this planet. And for those of you who are just playing with it, who are not grateful for anything, I challenge you tonight to write a list of things that you are grateful for and stick them up somewhere. Think about where you were. Think about where you were 12 months ago, 24 months ago, 36 months ago, and think about where you are now. Think about what he brought you through. Because somewhere along the way, he brought you through something. And I can tell you what, that something, is it, it wasn't for you. It didn't happen for you. It happened for the people that you were supposed to share it with. To let them know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. If he did it for you, he's going to do it for them. And that irregardless of what it looks like right now, that stop is just temporary. It is not your permanent resting place unless you decide to lay down in it. And never move. That every storm that comes your way, the rain must stop. And the sun will come out and start to shine. But you got to keep moving out of the storm. You can't just sit there. You can't just sit there and hover and, 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 and just think he's going to do it. He's not going to do what you can do for yourself. He's just going to add to it. 
So you got to know. You got to know. And I tell you, I, 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 guys, I wasn't coming on Martha Cooper Hudson platform today. I was coming on Rediscover Her platform. But I wanted you all to hear that. Because you have to know. Hey, son. When are you finished, can I see your phone? You have to know that irregardless of shadow, ir irregardless of what you're going through, be grateful for it. Lord, I thank you right now for being in this season right now. It may be tough right now, but it's teaching me who I am and whose I am. It's teaching me that I need to spend a little bit more time on my knees with you saying thank you. It's teaching me that I need to get up off my butt and do something. It's teaching me that irregardless of what it is, that he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And all you have to do is keep moving. You got to keep moving. Moving and moving forward. And in the midst of it all, don't be embarrassed to share your trials and tribulations. Because it didn't happen to you, it happened for you. Don't be embarrassed about your trials and tribulations. Let others see. That, you know what, if he did it for one, he'll do it again. And that is my mantra. If he did it for one, he'll do it again. And that there's no respective person that's out there. And so, guys, I ask you, keep him lifted as you, as you lift yourself. His name is Gerald. Because I want you to call him by his name. I want God to know who you're talking about. He is that young man, the 14-year-old laying in the bed at MUSC. He's that one. I want you, I want you to let God know who you're talking about. And as you're sending them up, send them up high. Send them up high. And I tell you what, guys. Anybody out there know LeBron James? Tell LeBron I'm looking for him. Because he needs a smile on his face. So, you, guys. Be thankful and grateful for the little, and he'll add everything else onto you. Guys, I challenge you. Here's what I challenge you to do. I challenge you to share this message, this message. I don't care if you don't share any other message, but I challenge you to share this message today with everyone. Put it on your Facebook page so that Everyone that pushes that button to listen will be blessed. Because I said, God, why am I going for Martha Cooper? And he said, because someone needs to hear what you have to say. Guys, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful and thankful for where he brought me from. That he took this little girl out the projects from a single mother. A college dropout. A person that people counted out for a very long time. And he turned that mess into this message because he had something greater for me to do. And if he took me and removed me from an atmosphere and moved me to a state in a city that I knew no one so that he can do his work in me huh. he'll do it for you and every day that I look at where I came from and where he has brought me and guys he's not even finished I'm thankful and grateful that I had a mother that was stronger than a, than a brick wall. That made sure that she raised a woman that could take care of herself. Even if she didn't have a wonderful husband to do so. That she taught me. That sweetheart, nothing is given to you. You have to go out there and work for it. But when you go out there that you never forget where God has brought you from and that you always give him thanks and honor and glory mm. 
Guys, I'm telling you. You can't do nothing without him. And I don't know who, who's trying, but you're on your own. You're on your own out there. So guys, just remember that. Just remember that. And I didn't mean to shed tears, but I tell you, when God is working, and when I look at where he brought this person from, when I look, all I can do is say thank you. Thank you. And you know, sometimes people still can't see the greatness in you, but that's okay. Because your father sees it. He sees it. And he knows it. So be grateful today, guys. Be grateful today at 744. Just be grateful. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I just thank you. Give your kids a hug. Give your husband a hug. Give yourself a hug. Give your girlfriend a hug. Call your mama and tell her that you love her. You know, just be grateful. Tell the people in your life that you're thankful and grateful for them. Just walk through your house and start touching your furniture and saying, God, I thank you. I'm so thankful and grateful for the roof over my head. I'm so thankful and grateful for the food in my cupboards. I'm so thankful and grateful for the gas in my car. I'm so thankful and grateful for the clothes I have on my body. I am so thankful and grateful that you didn't leave me. Nor did you forsake me. I'm so thankful and grateful that you took the time to love a sinner like me. And you still loving me and I'm still falling short. But just like the father that you are, you still give me your all. And your greatest. And I just want to do your will. That's it. That's it, guys. So, guys, I'm done. And I truly hope that. It blessed somebody that this message blessed somebody because trust me it could be worse just be thankful for the process and where you are right now guys I love each and every one of you I love each and every one of you but for those of you my Charlotte people my Columbia South Carolina people I'm coming to you I'm coming to you March 11th Ruth Chris get your tickets don't play with it Go over to rediscoverher.com and get your tickets. Because it's going to be a time. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. Trust me when I say this. But I had to bring this one to you tonight. I'm not a preacher. God didn't call me to be in the pulpit. He told me to go out there in the world because some of y'all won't even come into the church. Ooh. So I had to take it to the marketplace. He did. He did. He did. I won't hit you over the head with church, but you'll know that he does exist in my life. You'll see his light shine through me everywhere that I go. Rather, I'm jamming on the dance floor like I was last night in the car. Some of y'all saw that. Or rather, I'm in the front of a room speaking. I will never be ashamed to let anyone know who is the head and the CEO of this company. So guys, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. And be grateful and be thankful. Guys, I'm out. Good night. Have a great one. Remember, share it. Share it. Share it. Be blessed.